In the Middle East, more than 7,000 Kurdish forces are launching a new offensive against ISIL in Iraq. The goal to retake the northern city of Sinjar and cut militant supply lines between Syria and Iraq. CCTV's Roy Ruttenberg is following this story for us. He's live in our newsroom with the latest. Roy, what is the latest? Well, Mike, it's part of what's called Operation Inherent Resolve, a one-two punch approach with more than 250 airstrikes lighting up the nighttime sky and then thousands of Kurdish fighters ambushing a strategic highway on both sides of the city. It was a highly coordinated offensive. U.S.-led coalition forces striking hard overnight from above, paving the way for a ground operation. Sinjar sits in between the ISIL stronghold of Mosul in Iraq to the east and Raqqa, another ISIL stronghold, in Syria to the west. The two are linked by Highway 47, considered a key supply line for ISIL's fuel and arms. If the American-backed Kurdish forces are able to control the highway, they hope to retake the city. The situation so far is good. They have movements there, but there are continuous airstrikes on them. We are bombing them also with artillery from the positions above. The Kurdish Peshmerga fighters are being reinforced by thousands of lightly armed Yazidis. An ISIL defeat may not set back the group, but it would be highly symbolic, especially for the Yazidis, a religious minority that retreated to Mount Sinjar last year when ISIL seized control of Sinjar town. Human rights groups say thousands of Yazidis were murdered, raped and enslaved. The global outcry that ensued triggered U.S. airstrikes on Iraq one month later and eventually on Syria. In Vienna, diplomats began arriving for Saturday's talks aimed at ending Syria's civil war. The U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, who's expected in Austria, spoke in Washington on Thursday and said the fight against ISIL cannot be separated from the fight against Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. There are those invested in what has happened and in what has been done to them who see Assad as the critical component of the transition. That's why we are pushing so hard for a real transition. Because without a real transition, no matter how much we want it, the fighting will continue and the war will never end. Meanwhile, the Russian Foreign Ministry accused the U.S. of hijacking the upcoming talks. Along with Tehran, Moscow is considered one of Assad's biggest backers. Now, U.S. officials acknowledge that Washington is indeed taking a leading role in the working groups in Vienna set up by the U.N. envoy, but said the groups are very inclusive and that they expect Russia to participate in the bulk of the discussions. Mike? Well, let's talk a little bit more about the Sinjar. It appears to be far from over. What do you suspect is coming up next? Well, I think trying to take the city itself would be next, but that could take days. We know that ISIL fighters are embedded heavily in nearby communities. They've put in place uh, booby traps, uh, explosives in trucks, and no doubt they'll be putting up their best defense. The Kurds would likely go in slowly. They'll try to cut off the town, preventing ISIL fighters from escaping. They tried that before. Back in December, there was an initial offensive that failed to retake the city. If they're successful this time, it's unclear if it'll make much of a strategic difference. ISIL, of course, could find alternative supply routes. The Kurds may use Sinjar as a staging ground for future offensives, perhaps on Mosul. But again, on its own, this is an important battle. Remember, the Yazidis blamed the Kurds for failing to protect them and for allowing the city to fall in the first place. So getting it back for them would naturally go a long way, Mike. Roy, thanks so much.